certainly seems appropriate that a movie about a two-headed monster would be of two minds in a lot of ways. It's both a look back at the old gothic stories of mad science run amok, while also something of a prediction of where science fiction was heading at the time. It's an American production of a story that recalls a lot of American horror classics, yet it was co-produced and filmed in Japan, which was already on its path to creating some of the most wild and imaginative sci-fi films in the genre's history. It's a ridiculous and almost unacceptably bizarre film a lot of the time, and also a dead serious and very effective movie that would have influences here and there in horror films of the future, especially a particularly famous moment in Sam Raimi's Army of Darkness. The Manster at its core owes a lot to the most famous and easily best werewolf movie ever, The Wolfman. This is obvious in that, one, its main character is named Larry, and two, he's played by Peter Dinley, who I'm almost positive was cast in the role because he looked an awful lot like Lon Chaney Jr., even if his voice sounds more like Sylvester the Cat. Like the Wolfman's Larry Talbot, the Manster's Larry Stanford is sort of an average Joe who has been cursed, by science this time instead of supernatural forces, to turn into a bestial killer. He spends a lot of the film slowly realizing what he's becoming, but is powerless to stop the transformations, eventually going after the people that are closest to him. If that whole story sounds familiar, trust me when I say the way this film goes about it was unlike anything else at the time. Rather than just making Larry a werewolf or another Mr. Hyde, the filmmakers took the concept of the beast within and made it quite literal. Larry going into murderous rampages is only the beginning, because soon enough, there's a whole second creature growing inside of him, which first appears as an eye growing out of his shoulder. Didn't I say this would sound familiar to you Evil Dead fans? And then pops its head out to reveal some sort of freakish humanoid baboon. It's a crazy concept that actually works really well, as long as you don't think too much about the fact that it's an actor in makeup with a weird dead face puppet on his shoulder. Luckily the film knows that, and is pretty clever about hiding the fake head in dark lighting, especially the shot when it first pops out, and keeping the camera from ever revealing too much to ruin the effect. This is great, because it could have ended up looking like Zaphod Beeblebrox's dead-faced animatronic extra head in the BBC Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Sorry, Douglas. The Manster came out in a transition period when American horror and sci-fi was going through a big change as it entered the 1960s, while Japan was starting to develop its own imaginative style. The Manster somehow keeps its feet in both worlds and, to me, does an excellent job. It works as a revisiting of the Wolfman or Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde while keeping its own identity. It also paved the way for other fantastic Japanese takes on American classics, such as Frankenstein Conquers the World and King Kong Escapes. Definitely check this movie out if you can, and better yet, watch it twice! See you next time, kitties.